guys, my name's Alex and you're watching Alex's Fishing. In today's episode we're going to be going bike riding with two fishing rods just down at the local river, the River Torrens, for some mud monsters, so in other words carp. Uh, we could get the odd bycatch of catfish but today we're planning on catching carp and hopefully one over the 10 pound mark, maybe even 15. And if we're lucky, 20 pounds. Now I'm hoping for a 20 pound because I haven't caught one this year. Last year I got one that was 21 pounds, which I'll show you now. So guys, I just finally landed after years of targeting a 20 pound carp. I landed this 21 pound carp. It's uh, September at the moment and check out how fat that is. It's full of eggs. Awesome fish. So that's a 20 pound or 21 pound fish I got last year. Super fat and it was around this time of year so there should be plenty of big fat plump fish so hopefully today we get onto a couple. And the next scene you'll see me down at the river so don't run away. So I've just arrived at the zone and it's a nice little pool. This is why I like fishing torrents because there's all these deep pools in the middle of narrow streams. So over there, it's really shallow. And up around that bend there, it's really shallow as well. So the carp can't escape if they're trapped in this pool here. And it's about one and a half meters, so it's not deep at all. But as you can see, the water does come up here during a flood. But at the moment, it's quite low and they should be congregated in this little area here. So we'll try our luck here. We'll burly up in the spot we're gonna be casting at and hopefully we catch a few. Check out this epic little Gerber knife I just found. It's a fold out one, so I'll fold it out. Look at that. That is such a sick little pocket knife. And I just found it sitting in the grass up here, so someone must have left it from their recent fishing session, or maybe even a murder weapon. <laughs> That's really cool. I'm keeping that. Now, a lot of people are probably wondering what size hooks I use for carp, and I've heard a lot of people that have started out carp fishing they use um, big snapper hooks, so like 1-0s, 2-0s, even 3-0s. You shouldn't do that. And I know that carp have big mouths, but once they feel that hook or anything that's not natural, essentially, they'll drop the bait. So you'll quite often get the odd one that will suck it and run and set the hook on itself. But what I like to use are really small hooks. So your size 10 hooks even, but at the moment I'm using size 6 and size 4 suicide hooks. So I'll show you to them now. So that's a size 4 and that's a size 6. They're great hooks for carp fishing, especially in winter because they're so finicky. They pick it up, drop it, pick it up, drop it. And you want to use suicide hooks because when they pick it up, you want to set the hook. Whereas with circle hooks, you need the fish to run to get that hook in the corner of the jaw. And quite often, these carp won't run. They'll pick it up and 
they'll run for a bit and as soon as they feel the line or the hook they'll spit it back out which is why I like using smaller hooks and suicide hooks so hopefully that helps with what sort of hooks you need to use for carp fishing and give that a shot next time I'm getting bites already I literally just casted and I've hooked up I've hooked up you've got to be kidding <laughs> I literally just casted and take a look at how lazy this fish is being a winter fish they don't fight much see how it's not running at all it's just those head shakes and I literally just casted that out so I'm so glad that happened gives me some hope for today and that rod's just sitting there hopefully that doesn't go off while I'm fighting this fish but check it how lazy that fish is and quite often in winter time they'll just sit around and do those really slow head shakes whereas in summer this fish would would have probably ran all the way to the end there or even up that way that's the fish so we'll get him up and try land him for you geez he's a fat solid fish too I didn't realize how fat this fish was he's got some girth to him and that was literally 10 seconds in the water if not yeah unbelievable all right so we're gonna land this baby such a fat fish and I literally had the bait in for about a minute I said 10 seconds before because I was a bit pumped <laughs> but probably for a minute and this fish picked it up I could see the line twitching and in winter they won't pick it up and run like I said they will often pick it up drop it pick it up drop it and you need to set that hook which is why I said suicide hooks are the best now he's woken up and check out his run <laughs> this is a really fat fish guys I've seen him and like I said before I'm only using a size 6 hook on this rod so I've got that drag set just enough so it doesn't pull the hook out he could be hooked on the smallest bit of skin so you got to take it easy with these guys so guys you saw me hook that fish uh, you saw me fight it for a bit it didn't fight much but when you take a look at this oh you guys are gonna love it <laughs> that is one fat carp and it's around 70 centimeters but look at that belly chockers with eggs I reckon and take a look at that small hook pinned right on the side there that's the size 6 hook which is the smaller one from the ones I was holding earlier and that is a fat fish so I'll hold it up for the camera and hopefully you can see the full size Oh, this fish is pushing 15 oh, pushing 15 pounds look at that for a fat carp that is one solid fish a typical winter fish I should say because the way it took it it was so finicky picked it up dropped it picked it up dropped it as soon as I hooked it it just did those big head shakes and as you can see it's got that fat belly which is what you look for in a big winter carp so look at that for a slab for a mud marlin take a look at this bad boy my carp vlogger here we go hmm you know I could put this into good use step step here we go so what I just did there was dispatched of the carp humanely um, I found a big log and just knocked it on the head once and it just died I did hit it a couple more times just to make sure it was dead but I've chucked it in the bush and I've buried it a little bit as well just so that the smell doesn't fly everywhere and people can smell it on the footpath so that's usually what I do with carp or I feed them to the pelicans um, but there aren't any pelicans in this bushland here so yeah you want to bury them and use them as fertilizer so that was a great example of a big winter carp and that was first cast in about one minute 
and it's been about half the hour. <laughs> I've been too busy filming that carp and taking photos and whatnot, but we'll get back to fishing and hopefully there's a few more just sitting there waiting. Fingers crossed. Now I've got my other line set up again. There's two rods there and I reckon I just had a bite there. But before I start getting hits or bites, I'll show you some more footage of other fish that I've caught in this area here. This little one, one single pool. I've caught some big fish here and I've missed so many. So there's got to be quite a few in this little system here. Roll the tape. Especially seeing it's winter, they're staying down deep and really lazy feeders. I've probably missed about six so far. I've hooked them, but the hooks just keep pulling because it's only getting stuck on a little bit of skin because they're only dropping it as soon as they suck it in. So I managed to hook and land this guy. I just saw my line go flat. Oh yeah. And I picked up. And <laughs> That's insane. It's a good fish, please. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh. That's a 10 pounder. Did you really grab it? I, I swear, every time we go fishing, we we're, like, we're like, I guarantee you, if, if there was 50 of us and we each did the exact same thing and Alex was there, he'd be the one that guaranteed catch. <laughs> oh, look at... Oh, it's just hooked. Not even hooked properly. It's on the smallest bit of skin. Oh, oh nice. I don't want to snap it. <laughs> come on, come down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, that's a nice that. fish. I'll get a photo as well. Sweet. Thanks for filming. That's all good. So both those fish were probably around that 12 to 15 pound mark. They were super fat. Once again, winter fish. Only caught a couple of weeks ago. And that last bit of footage you saw were with three of my fans. So it was Lino, Julian and Isaac. They're great young lads and I caught that fish and I wish they got onto him that day, but I'll be teeing another session up with them and filming a video, so stay tuned for that video. But in the meantime, we'll keep trying to catch another carp and hopefully it's a big one too. And now, when I'm using bread, I only use the middle bits because it's the part that you can mold best on your hook, like so. It's nice and moist, whereas with the crust, it's really crusty and uh, no. Well, I've just ruined it for this spot feeding the ducks, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to make a move now and I'm going to try find another pool. I've fished a lot of these pools down here and I reckon I've got a couple in mind which I'm really eager to try today. So. We'll start packing up and uh, I'll see you at the next spot. Alright, so I ride along the Torrens quite a fair bit and every time I come past this one pool here in this narrow section runs down into this deep pool um, and over there it's really narrow as well. Every time I ride past here, I know there's fish in it but I've tried probably five or six times and haven't had any luck. And I've got a couple of mates who have fished it before and has caught oh, 50 centimetre fish but I don't know why I can't catch them. So I'm going to give this spot a miss, but this is essentially what you want to look for. So just a pool in between some narrow streams and there's narrow streams up there and it's a deep section, which is where the carp like to congregate, especially being winter. They're trying to find the deepest sections in the river. So this would be a good spot, but I'm going to try find another spot. So it's nice and narrow up there and then it comes down to a deep section here. And then around that bend, it's nice and narrow again. So we're gonna fish this little honey hole here. And I've had a lot of memories here with uh, Tom's fishing adventures. Oh, 
see you there. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Face full of chips, hooked up. Okay, that might be big. This is gold. Oh, okay. That's a good fish. How do you see that him? is a really good I fish. I can't. There he is. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, look at that. Chunk Quality of carp. carp. Look at that. Can't even see that hook down his throat. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, shut <laughs> up. Look at that. Fat little fish for its size. You suck that down just like I suck the chips down. <laughs> Alright, Alex has just stood up to a monster. Again, we'll just a like. A monster. A monster. This is like a 50 pound fish. No. Hey. Are we getting close? I reckon it's 100. Ah. Uh, oh crap. Oh crap. Can you feel around the snag? Crap, 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 crap. Work him out, work him out, work him out. Come on, what, is he in a Big snag? Fish. He's on a snag. Ah, oh, shit, come on. And I've got four pound leader. I shouldn't have used four pound leader. I can feel him rubbing on the snag. Oh, look at his rod. Oh. oh my god. It's pulling, it's, it's coming out. He's coming out. Yeah. He's out, he's out. He's so close. You've got to be careful with the four pound. Oh, yeah. And I don't know how big he is, but he had a lot of weight. Oh, no. No, he's busted me. He's busted me. <laughs> Remain calm. Oh, that is so gut-wrenching. Uh, I'm tying 10 pound now because I got busted off with 4 pound. So let's give it a crack and see if we can't catch anything. So guys, I've just hooked up to a nice slab. Another good winter fish. Oh, and check out those head shakes. You can just tell it's a big winter carp by those head shakes and the lack of runs. And I know there's a snag up there because I got busted off last time with Tom. So I'm going to try reel him in this way. But those big head shakes just indicate that it's a big winter carp. And it's no small one, so I'll try bring him over to the rocks over there and land him for you guys. Alright, so I reckon I've tied it out a fair bit now. Double hookup, literally what I was just saying. So I've just hooked up to the third fish in this pool, and this one's a screamer. Good stuff. He ended up busting me off. <laughs> 